Hey everyone, I'm Aaron from Sour Joe, and today we're gonna to be doing something a little bit different. We're actually doing a multi-part series on the science of sourdough. Don't worry, I'm not gonna be giving you long-winded lectures. I am not a scientist. I, uh, don't, I actually don't think I'm qualified to do anything. But I'm getting all of my information from credible sources, and I'll be linking to them in the description below. So please go check it out if you're interested in further information. So we're going to cover a lot of things, but this video specifically, we're focusing on flour and wheat and the anatomy of the wheat berry and a couple of the things going on there, and then we'll get into other stuff. Why, why am I telling you when I can just show you? Wheat was first cultivated as a crop roughly 12,000 years ago in ancient Mesopotamia. Now, over 700 million metric tons is produced worldwide, and 95% of that is common wheat, or bread wheat. The word flour is basically synonymous with this type. So if that's the case, then what's all-purpose, or whole wheat, or pastry? Now don't freak out, but they're all common wheat. However, that's where the commonalities stop. I mean, it's all flour, but they're all blends of variations for different purposes. You wouldn't want your croissant as chewy as bread or your bread as crumbly as a cookie. And yet, they're all made from flour. To understand the differences, let's take a quick look at the plant itself. So wheat is classified by three main factors, season, color, and protein. It's planted twice a year, winter and spring. Winter wheat is planted in late fall and harvested in early spring, while spring wheat is the other way around. It's one of two colors, red or white. This is based on the shade of the brand, the outer husk, and has virtually no bearing on the color of the milled flour. Although, the flavor of reds tend to lend themselves better to hardier things like breads rather than pastries. Finally, it's rated by either hard or soft, referring to how much protein it has, or rather, its gluten potential. All these factors indicate what strain of common wheat you're dealing with. Hard red winter wheat is best for those chewy, crusty, rustic loaves, while soft white spring wheat is perfect for pastries and cake. Most readily available flour off the shelf have pre-made blends to suit certain needs, and not just that, but they'll often take the most nutritious parts out. This is the wheat berry. This is the bran, the germ, and the endosperm. This is all carbohydrates and starches. So this little guy metabolizes all of this and grows into a plant. This part is just to protect it from the cruel, mean world. After milling, the bran and germ are sifted off because it's easier to bake without them and the flour actually has a longer shelf life. The oils in the bran and the germ actually go rancid quicker. That's why whole wheat is called exactly that because the bag contains the whole milled wheat berry. However, what happens often in large-scale production is something called Frankensteining, where all the flour is milled, sifted, categorized, and then reassembled in the bag. This isn't necessarily a bad thing, but, you know, the more you know. So, for example, most all-purpose flours will be a certain combination of hard and soft with the bran and germ removed. Pastry or cake flour will be soft and wheat as well with the bran removed, but it's usually around six to nine percent protein. When baking bread like sourdough, we aim for something between 10 and 13 percent range, which is enough for structure and texture, but not so much it'll be too dense to enjoy. Some brands will even specifically sell bread flour, which is, you know, on the nose. Inside the flour is a whole world of different components that, when in wheat form, would help that little berry sprout and turn into a full-grown plant, but we hijack these natural processes to make a nutritious loaf of sourdough. The chemical process is so fascinating, especially when you introduce yeast and bacteria into the mix. But we'll cover that in part two. Hey, I hope you enjoyed the video. Remember to like and subscribe and share and comment. We love to hear what you guys have to say. Speaking of which, check us out at Sour Joe Official on any social media and go to sourjoe.com to sign up for our newsletter. It's got a ton of information and updates and it's great. You should just go and see for yourself. 
In the meantime, I'm Aaron Brandolino. Happy baking.